Okay, hello and welcome to this episode of Design Time. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone. This is our January 2017 episode. And so you're joining me, Carolyn, and Dawn as today as we talk about uh, ways to promote discussion using the discussion board in uh, Blackboard. And so uh, one of the things we're going to talk about to start with is just when you should use a discussion. Because one of the things we find is that the discussion board, particularly in an online class, kind of becomes a default assignment that um, it, it almost is like it's expected that you have to have discussion boards. And the reality is the discussion board is a very useful tool for promoting student to student and student to instructor interaction. But it shouldn't just be used um, as if it's a requirement or as a default. Uh, discussions, a discussion board is best when you actually want to <clears throat> excuse me, promote discussion. Um, and, and to that end, you, you don't want, for instance, to create discussion assignments that uh, require a, a short answer or a, uh, that where there's a single right answer uh, because that, there's nothing to discuss. Either you're right or you're wrong. Ideally, discussion boards uh, are best used when you have a topic that actually promotes debate or conversation, when you want students to have a back and forth about a particular topic. If you're looking for a particular right answer um, or for some collaboration between students, then there are other tools that are better suited to that, such as the wiki or the journal or the blog. Um, but today what we're going to talk about is how to get the most out of your discussion board, the way, uh, how to design prompts for student responses that actually result in that conversation that you're hopefully looking for. So Dawn's going to talk a little bit about uh, types of questions that you can post, prompts that you can design for your discussion board assignments that will actually promote uh, that discussion that you're looking for. So Dawn? Good morning, everybody, and Happy New Year as well. As Carolyn was talking about, we are going to talk about um, these questions that promote discussion. And one of the first things I want to point out, uh, hopefully you all can see my slide here, is the underlined words. We have analysis, compare and contrast, cause and effect, and clarification. One of the things I want to point out here is if you remember the Bloom's Taxonomy Pyramid, we are talking about higher level thinking order here. We are not talking about just understand and rote memorization. To Carolyn's point, if you're asking those kinds of questions, those are direct memorization. They have a right or wrong answer. They are not going to promote a discussion amongst your students. Some of the best um, conversations come from like an ethics course, um, an, a course that you're touching on people's values, their opinions, their thoughts, what they've always um, centered their, their way of thinking around, those things really promote discussion. Some direct examples of that, um, as you can see on the slide, if, and if you're not ever sure, you can always refer back and make sure you're starting your prompt with a type of question that's set up in these ways. So for analysis, questions beginning with why, how would you explain, what is the importance of, these kinds of things. And we have an example here of what's the importance of having a code of ethics in your profession. Hopefully you can see by that kind of an example that every one of your students should have a different answer. Or if not a completely different answer, a different take on the answer. That's the key to promoting discussion. Because everybody, and one of the conversations I have with faculty a lot of times, is how do I get my students to stop saying, I agree, or what Sally said is right, or that's not a discussion. And if you think about your live classroom, when you're having a discussion, people aren't raising their hand to just go, I agree. That just stops the discussion flat. So you've got to think about your prompts. So another one is compare and contrast. What is the difference between? What is the similarity between? And this is something I think a lot of you, especially in our profession, could really utilize. Um, you have a lot of um, opportunities with your terms and your diagnosis where things may overlap. So you need to understand very clearly the differences and the similarities so you know when things are um, true to fact when you're diagnosing. 
Um, we threw this example out there of the difference between the Affordable Care Act and the single payer insurance just because it's a huge topic of conversation and probably will be for a long time. Um, also, cause and effect. What is the connection between one thing and another? What are the causes or results of? These are awesome in case studies. So you're reading through a case and you're seeing how people are choosing to make decisions. What are the cause and effect of those decisions made? Um, you could take this in a lot of different directions. You could present them with a wrong decision and talk about cause and effect and then present them with a correct decision and do a cause and effect. We like to put those into what we call learning objects and interactive um, scenarios on the computer, but that absolutely can be done in a discussion as well, as long as you keep it open and allow your students to find those answers together. And then lastly, as an example, and there's many, many more, but clarification. What is meant by or explain how? There are a lot of terms and definitions and concepts, probably more applicable here, that might have different meaning to different people. And in your class, you want to focus that meaning to a particular objective or what you're trying to get across to your students. So asking them to clarify it for you will help you not only make sure they understand it at the level you want them to understand, but also help them to better practice in narrowing that clarification and explanation of a concept. So these are examples of how to promote real discussion and to ensure that you're getting more perspectives from your student and not yes, no, agree, disagree, and that's it. And we hope this has been beneficial. As always, the CETIS design team is available if you want to come in or have a specific question or want to brainstorm an idea. We're always here and ready and willing to do that for you. And I think that's it. Carolyn, do you have anything else to, to add? No, the only thing, the only thing that I would add um, in, in terms of promoting discussion, it, 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 something you said prompted me to think this. Um, there's, a, there's a little trick in your settings in your discussion board to help students from just um, reading other people's posts and then, and then kind of picking up and what you wind up having is, is sort of that spiraling, everybody says the same thing. And that's to require them to post before they can see anyone else's post. Mm -hmm. And it's just a setting you can check in your discussion board. And so participants have to post something, and then they, then they can see everyone else's post. And that's a little trick to also help promote discussion, because otherwise they're, you know, students have a tendency to read other people's and kind of see the trend and, and go along with the, the flow. You know, it's sort of the, the sheep effect, if you will following the herd. So, so just a little trick there to, to also help promote original thought and discussion. So. Right. And, and it helps you to know that it was original thought. Exactly. Because even if somebody says something very similar, because you have that setting, you know that they both just happen to have the same path in mind, and, but they couldn't have seen each other's because they had to post first beforehand. So it really does help a lot of, a lot of different things. Right. So. right. So that's it for us for this month, and so we, we look forward to seeing you next month, first Wednesday in February. We'll be back with another design time to help you uh, make your teaching life easier. Thanks a bunch. See ya. Bye, everybody.